System on K Rock. It's Kevin Kenny. We got Shavo in the house. Hey man, thank you for having me. We ain't just spinning for no reason. The man uh, himself is here. What's going on, brother? Yeah. Chilling, bro. Just uh, checking out the new building. It's badass. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, love you've been coming to K Rock your whole life. Yeah, you know, and to it, like three, four different buildings that they went through. Oh yeah, yeah but in, this in is the this, last this, twenty some years. This is pretty ill, right? This is real cool. This, this is a yeah, cool he, pad we got here. He walked me around, and there's some really cool things going on here. Definitely, yo. Yeah. Let's talk about something really cool today. Bring it. It's two, 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 two. Right? Yes. I think I got that right. And yes. you obviously are the head of Twenty Two Red. A very yes, cool. Let's call it a lifestyle brand, but mm-hmm. it's a lot more than that. So tell me about Twenty Two Red. Uh, it started around three years ago. Me and a friend got together. We were going to make a lifestyle brand. It wasn't going to be anything that it is now, somewhat style-wise, but not the product. Um, I've always been an advocate of marijuana and cannabis, you know, but I never wanted to be in the business of it because I just, you know, I want to practice what I preach and I don't know who's growing it. I didn't know what it was like. So I, if it's not something I intake, I don't want to put my name on it and sell it to anybody. So it can't just be anyone doing it. So we're going to do this brand with the cool vibes that it is now with the blacks and the reds and the iridescent colors and stuff. And I met my third partner who was like the master grower in LA, right? And um, I didn't really know. I knew him from a past, but I didn't know how great he was until I saw his place. And his uh, big shout out to Surreal Yields. He's killer, you know, the best. And so he uh, showed me his stuff and I said, I can represent this. So let's make it a lifestyle slash cannabis brand. And it was in 2017, right when uh, we in California became recreational. So it was a perfect time for me to get in the business and be able to represent what I actually, you know, yeah. appreciate and love. So Well, you've always had that business mind because you were just telling me off air, you managed System for Down for the first three years. The first two and a half, three years, yeah, yeah. I actually, you know, it was tough passing the baton to the, you know, current manager that's there now, Bino, who's our savior. <laughs> He's amazing. Now he does corn and a bunch of other people. Oh, totally. Allison Chains, Smashing Pumpkins, Deftones. So, oh, yeah. yeah, he's killer, man. Um, so, anyway, that's how it started. And we're three years strong. Um, 22, because that's just a number kind of I was born with, mm-hmm. you know? April 22nd, your April birthday. April 22nd. And uh, I got married May 22nd. Oh, wow. I was 22 when we found Bino and he found us and vice versa. Um I was 44 when I thought of 22 red. That's 22 times two. Yeah. And the craziest that I didn't even know until recently was my two boys. Um, I have two sons. They're two day, sorry, two years and 22 days apart. Whoa. Literally, that's the real. I mean, isn't that, that wasn't planned or nothing because it was, like like Jay Z's like that with uh, the number four. And yeah. I think like there's just these numbers in life that are so magical, man. If you it look, just, yeah, it's always been there. I never thought I'd, I'd wear 22 on my jersey on stage my whole life. You know, yeah. the, the whole system of down like era and um so it was the natural you know thing to do and call it that i never wanted to name the brand something with me and kind of benefit off of just like be a celebrity brand i didn't want that right this is not a celebrity thing i just happen to be one at times right right (laughs) exactly exactly when you want to be you guys cuss because you know when you're on live radio if you're listening to k-rock right now you can't cuss on live radio as you might imagine and so it's a little nerve-wracking you know especially when you know we're off air and shot was dropping s-bombs and f-bombs and all this sort of stuff <laughs> so i go yeah yeah don't, don't don't cuss i know you've done this a million times and he goes dude one time we got kicked off of snl for cussing what is this story? not kicked off but we got banned like you know at the time um i don't know what the situation is now right but um so we were asked to perform byob I mean, that's a big event for us, man. SNL, huge, that's legendary, epic. Huge, You know, I was going to say epic S. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, so during the song, we were told not to cuss. I don't know how it happened. It slipped. But as it slipped, it was Darren. And as he said it, uh, he, he dropped the F-bomb. The camera was straight on his face. And so it, it went live for half the country right away. They missed the the button <laughs> so what happens so, when you get off like how soon do you realize it is was it lauren michaels started, who comes over to you guys yeah, or people it, started like mo- moving around and it was got weird and okay. it got colder in there <laughs> and how <laughs> so, and for the anybody who hasn't attended a taping in new york city and you watch it on tv it probably looks like a big room but it's a very it's small a room tiny place with a bunch i mean we had dan Aykroyd there bro watching us because i guess his kid was a fan and chevy chase came through so it was like legendary people looking at us and I, th- I think Chevy was laughing because I think the last time anyone dropped the F-bomb was him. Oh, no way. Yeah, got away with it. So anyway, we got um, we got fined and uh, the rest is history, bro. Who hosted? Johnny Knoxville. Oh, my gosh. What an episode. Yeah, it was cool. So did you guys get to meet Johnny? And he, yeah, of course. We hung yeah. out. Yeah. He's you guys, cool dude. Like, yeah, I mean, I feel like, the, you know, between Jackass and then you guys, I mean, those are like two right, pieces of pod. Band. Yeah. Totally. Collaboration. So fast forward to 2022, you guys just did this huge show with Corn out here in LA. What was that like? We actually, in October, so the two shows that 
we just played uh, on the 4th and the 5th of uh, f- February, we had planned from like 2020. Okay. And then the pandemic hit and we stopped. And uh, we had to postpone it to 2021. And then they got postponed to October of last year where we played a few shows with them, um, Oakland, um, Fresno, and uh, can't think of the other one. Yeah. Vegas. Well, how, how can I forget Vegas? Of course, Vegas? come on. And um, it went well right when we came to do the two LA shows the day before Serge got COVID, our singer. So we had to postpone it to February 4th and 5th, and finally they happened. And I'll tell you, it was amazing. It was epic for me. Uh, we've played so many shows, right, throughout the years, but it just felt so great. And I love those guys from Corn. We're a great package together, you know, because fans of both bands love each other. Definitely. So it was this, like, unity in there. And then we had also Helmet that day. Oh, man. Uh, there was this... Um, Smaller band, but really cool band called Russian Circle. Cool. Um, in, in, instrumental band, but heavy. Yeah. Really cool, you know, music. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? The S-bomb almost yeah. came out. <laughs> He's learning, folks. He's so, learning. We're anyways, Shavo Radio I have today. my own button. Huh? Um, so, bro, it was great. It was great. I wish, yeah. uh, it's kind of bittersweet. I wish we had more. Totally. You know, you know it's funny because Korn is obviously, you know, an icon of what they've seen in hindsight deemed new metal, right? And mm-hmm. you guys kind of were around that same era, but Rick Rubin, who did all your records, you know, he has talked about how what made you guys different was you guys didn't have metal rhythm, right? You were a metal band, but you had a different rhythm, almost like a system of a down rhythm. In yeah. your mind, just be, and you're so close to it, I'm curious your perspective. What has made and what did make System different from some of your peers? I mean, it was a lot of things. The music, first of all, we just kind of did our own thing. It wasn't that the other stuff wasn't good. We've been inspired by a lot you know we listen to a lot of music darren listens to a lot of music john, sarah john um and just i think it's the way it's also arranged you know darren has a really um great ear mm-hmm. and uh, style and songwriting ability so even if i brought riffs in he just arranges it in a different way that boom you know and then serge's vocals those are not normal you know and john's yeah. drumming is you know it is what it is i'm not going to boast our own boost our own bubble what do you say burst yeah. our own you know my own bubble but yeah, dude, there's a difference. And we just kind of ran with it. And it's just what we can do together. When we start playing, that's what we sound like together. Yeah. Those four guys. Absolutely, know? bro. And, so. the st- and the staying power, you know, and the longevity speaks for itself. Shavo is here for good reason. It is uh, two, 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 which I'm already sick of from social media. Right. But it is, it is quite the occasion for a man that loves the number so much and also runs 22 Red. That is at 22 Red on yes, IG. Sir. And uh, it's just so cool to have you here, dude. Your, you. your track record here at K Rock, your track record in music. And there's so many interesting things to talk to you about. If you're just tuning into K Rock, we were just talking to Shavo about getting banned from SNL for dropping the F-bomb. It wasn't Shabo, it was Darren. <laughs> it wasn't me. But, um, dude, also, I think you guys are such a fascinating band for a ton of reasons, but one of them is something we were talking about before we went live, and you guys had the number one album on 9-11. Yeah. And so that's a moment for you personally, right, as a band, where it's like the pinnacle. I mean, it's every kid's dream to have the number one album in America. You guys achieve it, especially with an unorthodox sound. It wasn't a pop band. It wasn't, you know, even a, a hip-hop band. It was a, it was a metal band. It was a rock band. It was a system, right? But then it's coming at this time where the country's at this crossroads and everything's up in the air and i mean anybody listening if you were around back then you remember how that felt how did that feel for you because well, mo- dude there's a crazy story about that so um sound scans came our, our album dropped the week prior to so the sound scan dropped on s- september 11th so in the morning and we had this tour coming up with slipknot called a pledge of allegiance so i was kind of getting ready for that i was sleeping in 9 a.m 8 30 my phone's ringing off the hook wasn't answering for a while, but then it was, it didn't stop ringing. So I answered, it was my mom. Turn the TV on, something crazy is happening. I turn it on, I see the towers falling, burning. I'm like, what the hell, is this movie? Is this, is this real? The phone beeps. I go to the other line. It's my man, it's Bino going, hey, uh, c- congratulations, you're number one on uh, Billboard. That's, I hear both things in, in the same like five minutes. And it was bittersweet, nasty good, happy, not happy, what's happening, confused. It was crazy. So that's how I remember being told we were number one on Billboard. <laughs> it's. Fu- I mean, that that is just such an incredible story. And of course, you know, uh, th- there's so many lessons that you learn along the road, especially as being a famous musician. And But one of them, is, is, as anybody, even if you don't make music, if you're just a person, you get older, you realize there's ups and downs in life, right? Mm-hmm. The yin and the yang of life, and it all balances out. And that's such a great story of that sort of good and, and, and terrible at the same time and, and taking the good with the bad. Did you, that have a lasting impact on you? Oh, I'm telling the story now, right? It yeah. was like 20... 20- one years ago. Right. And uh, it was crazy, bro. That whole time we had that tour coming up. So um, our crew was at the airport when that went down, going to get like a prep going. So they were held up at the airport. Our gear got held up. We had to postpone the whole thing for like a month and then we went back and did it 
What was that first show back like? Crazy. Yeah. There was like tension between right. people, you know? And a lot of people didn't know what an Armenian was and we we're on tour in like the Midwest. And so we were not, you know, there was this whole thing with the Middle East and thinking that we might be that. So there was a, there was a lot of tension, bro. Well, and I remember the FCC came in. I think they banned a lot of songs. Chop, Chop Suey. Suey, yeah. Chop so what Suey. was that like? How did you find out that your song, they told the us hit was, single off yeah. the number one album, is now banned <laughs> on the radio? Crazy, right? It was that uh, Drowning Pool, right? Uh, a song from them. Yeah, bro. It was a crazy time. I mean, it was uh, it was weird. It Bring was you guys yeah. closer together. It did really, yeah. and it made the whole thing just that much more memorable. Yeah, and. Like nostalgic. I haven't talked about it for so long. It's kind of like wow, you know. Thinking about talking it. about it right of now. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, it was eerie. Yeah, you know, the whole climate on Earth felt eerie. Like just not in America because that's that shocked the world. That mm. didn't just shock people here. You know. Yeah. So uh, it affected. It, it's like there's only a few times that I remember in my lifetime where the whole Earth got affected by something. You know, right. Like every. Right, uh, race, you know, yeah. every country, and that it's, was one of them. And I mean, I'm maybe, maybe only, and I say maybe, but maybe only second to the pandemic. I mean, just one of the biggest before and after moments of my life. Yeah, yeah, you know, see. crazy. This guy is like the hardest working man in, oh, man in rock music right now because you got system going on. You just did the uh, the huge show with Corn here in LA. You're obviously rocking with Twenty Two Red today and running that, being the head of that and being real hands on with that. And then you got this new side project mm -hmm. called North Kingsley. Yes, sir. So tell us about North Kingsley. Uh, it started a few years back. I wanted to start making music again. It's been a while since we dropped music. Um, I have a studio, so I found someone that was really good at Logic Pro, and I asked him to give me some lessons. And while we're, he's giving me some lessons, we created something, and it was so good. I was like, instead of giving me lessons, let's just create together. Totally. And then he brought this a vocalist. His name was Saro Paparian. He um, he had a friend who was really a good lyricist. He came in. We just kind of bonded and made music. It wasn't supposed to be a band. It was just a project. I was just you know testing the waters. And it became what it is. And we just keep evolving. Uh, what we have, we have six songs out. We did two EPs. I dropped it all myself, no label, no nothing. And it's, it's a genre bender. You know, we got like heavy um, beats, you know, kind of trappish electronic EDM beats, um, darker mm -hmm. than most uh, with my guitars and bass over it with yeah. really cool lyrics over it. And um, it's become, it's kind of evolving into a heavier thing now where I put distortion on my bass now, so it's like this baritone vibe, really heavy, and he's screaming and singing more, so we're evolving, and I, it's, you know, it's really refreshing to evolve and you know, find your sound, and it's like, I feel like I'm starting fresh, it's cool. Yeah, you gotta do that, man. You know? As you go on in your career, you gotta do that, man. You gotta keep things fresh. We're doing this thing on K-Rock all day where it's like, I think a double play, yeah. it's for two, 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 two. We're about to get into a system uh, double play, and the first song that I'm looking at here is uh, Ariel's. What, do you, what story can you tell us about the song Ariel's? <laughs> you know I got stories. Um, Darren brought that in. Uh, here's a funny one. So Darren brought that in. We, were, we thought it was like the song because it felt like, you know, complete. And then when uh, we do pre-production with Rick, he was like, there's something missing. Something. We're like, nothing's missing, bro. This is how it is. And he said, make one part heavy. And we just made the middle part. We just went heavy on that middle part. And the song became, it was like, wow, we did miss something. You know, you never know that you need that other ear to like kind of tell you something. And yeah. Yeah. So that's the, with that, you know, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Shabba, I can't thank you enough, bro. Thank you, brother. This is awesome. You're it's awesome. K -Rock. Hell yeah. Pleasure.